found dead in a pool of blood hours later. We all know of the jockey, Omari Wilkins from Upper Gambles, who fell off a horse. Madam he started Speaker, speaking about it. I rise. He started Madam, speaking about it. Madam Speaker, complaints of abdominal pains. Honourable Member, I rise on a point of order. Um, you will have to sit if you want me to say it. Turn your mic off. <laughs> Madam Speaker, according to the rules, um, if one is going to give these sort of, make this type of accusation, one would have to have the evidence in order to show, because the point of order, Madam Speaker. You're not the Honor, Speaker. I will remember. Honor, I will remember that. You're not the Speaker. So what I'm saying, Madam Speaker, um, I, I go by your, 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 your rules and your judgment, but the fact of the matter is I think that these... Honor, honorable members, I rule, not you. Madam Speaker, I will request for the benefit of those of us on this side that whatever the, the member was reading from in connection with these accusations, that it be made available to the Parliament so that we can look at it because what is happening here, Madam, is seriously undermining the health situation in the country and making people believe that anybody that goes to the Halberton Hospital is going to die. So I am just saying, Madam Speaker, I would wish that you will allow for the gentleman to make the, the, the information he has available to the Parliament. Honorable Member, I find that your request is reasonable. It's in keeping with the traditions of this House that any documents from which you read, documents which you refer, uh, pass around for the benefit of the other members. And I think the request is reasonable. So I will ask that the Sergeant at Arms, I hope, please, please, I hope that it's an identifiable document. It is? Is it an official document that you're reading from? Okay. So please, so please, would you make available to the Sergeant at Arms so that copies can be made? Thank you. I will add here, yeah. Madam Speaker. If the gentleman has an office. You rise on. On the point, continue the point of order. Because if he has an Sit official down. document, then Sit he down. needs to see particulars of that document, if it is official. Uh, yes, that because is right. You can't say that it is official and just leave it at that and yes. continue. Yes. And tomorrow we find it is not an official document. Your point is taken, which is why I asked if it is an official document and not just a compilation of, of his own making. He assures me that it is, official, it is an official document, so I will need, of course, my own copy. I will add here, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I will make the do available. And I also can, Madam Speaker, after, make the patient records be available. To I will. I just want you to make available anything to which you refer in this, yes, in this presentation. I will. Madam Speaker, we all know of the jockey who fell off of a horse and was hospitalized with complaints of abdominal pains. On the fourth day of hospitalization, he was discharged by doctors at 8 a.m. At 10.30 a.m., when the nurses arrived to execute the discharge, they found him dead. The autopsy revealed he had a ruptured bowel. There is also the case, Madam Speaker, of the Gray's Farm man. His sister is actually a nurse in the Gray's Farm clinic who was involved in an accident and had to be taken to the hospital to be operated on immediately. The operation took place the following afternoon at 3 p.m., by which time it was too late. The young man died on the operating table. As tragic as it is, though, this is just a sample, Madam Speaker. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to be told the truth. They want to hide the truth. The families, some of them, have already instigated legal action 
against the government. There are many more, Madam Speaker, many more. And so I ask the Health Minister, how many more must die? How many more? With these specific examples, Madam Speaker, from the last 18 months, I'm sure the people of this country can understand that what we are dealing with is not merely medical malpractice, Madam Speaker, but it's criminal negligence. Criminal negligence, Madam Speaker, and in its most deadly manifestation. Right track? Right direction? No change. A 20-year-old Madam Speaker named Govind Singh was admitted to Halberton Hospital for treatment of an abdominal injury. He was taken to the operating room where it was determined that he only had a bruised pancreas and the corrective work was supposedly done. Soon thereafter, his bowel contents started leaking. Nothing was done, Madam Speaker, with the explanation that there was nothing else that could be done. The family members asked if there was anyone in Antigua capable of taking care of this problem. They said no and recommended that the young man be taken to Trinidad. As his condition worsened, the family was forced to find 70,000 U.S. dollars, 70,000 U.S. dollars to fly him to Trinidad via a ambulance for treatment nine days later. On the operating table in Trinidad, the doctors found two large tears, one five centimeters, the other three centimeters, to which the bowel contents were leaking. By that time, the tears had become seriously infected and septic that the doctors were unable to do anything immediately. He remained under treatment for two weeks and then had to return to Antigua because the family had no more money to keep him hospitalized in Trinidad. When the family finally got him to Dr. Joey John, he could not stand up. He could not hold his head, Madam Speaker. He had lost 80 pounds. He was extremely septic with pus infected all over. Dr. John operated on this young man in his own operating room and spent seven hours fixing all the old and new problems that were created inside his belly. He spent three days in life support and was sent home two and a half weeks later. Today, Madam Speaker, that young man is now fully recovered and is employed as a computer technician in Medical Surgical Associates. About a year and a half ago, a woman went to Alberton Hospital to be treated for diverticulitis, which is an infection in the colon. Following the corrective operation, bowel content started to come from the wound. She became very ill and needed to be placed on life support. The family begged, the family pleaded with the authorities of Alberton to take her to Dr. Joey John. In response, the family was threatened. The family was threatened that if the patient was taken to Dr. John and she needed dialysis, she would not be able to return to Alberton. The family took her to Cleveland Clinic in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where doctors cleaned up the abscesses that were inside the abdominal cavity and determined that she would have to wait one year to do the major operation. In the meantime, she could not eat because everything would come through, Madam Speaker, through the incision. As a result, total parenteral nutrition was administered to a big vein in the neck for 14 hours a day. In September 2008, when they were ready to do the operation, she was informed there would be a very long procedure. They gave her the estimate. She could not afford it. The family turned to Dr. John who performed a six-hour operation at his clinic. Three days later, 
She was able to have a 